Hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zinger Show, episode number 170, with me, your host, Agostino. And in case you're wondering, yes, this is the second podcast in a day, but if Joe Rogan can do it, I can do it. And of course, I'm that flipping egotistical and that delusional that I'm comparing myself to the great Joe Rogan. And what does it matter? What do you care? And what the hell can you do about it? Nothing. All right, nothing. Anyway, welcome back to the show. I thought, why not? I've got an extra hour lying around. You know, I'm not going to be doing anything. I'll probably be on social media scratching my nuts or doing some other bullshit. So why not record another podcast and get this content going? Okay, hope you guys are well. Hope you guys are well. Hydrated, well fed, and all that malarkey. I'm feeling awesome. I'm feeling amazing. So just wanted to like highlight what's going on, right? Um, Or kind of give an update on the situation that I commented on uh, previously. So um, I listened to the Joe Budden podcast, which was very illuminating. Um, gave me a lot of insight into things I had no idea about. And it seems as if I might have been a little bit off when it came to my analysis regarding Yes Jules v. Scotty Beam v. Karen Civil v. Joe Budden and v. the entire industry, right? It might, it might have been a little bit off. At first, it seemed like woke Twitter was a bit aggrieved that this young white lady with a, with a massive bum would go around, you know, saying the N-word or putting up pictures of the N-word loosely and being all, you know, out there and being all flagrant and acting like her shit doesn't stink, all this malarkey. I just thought it was a general, you know, a catty sort of girl thing where they didn't like each other and I didn't really think that much of it, hence why I gave my first analysis. And I sometimes do think in the way, in the, in the, in the area of podcasting and in an area of social media, sometimes it is quite beneficial to just go on your um, own first impressions without digging too deep into it. I'm not a gossip hound. I don't really know what's going on in the industry. I'm all the way here in the UK. I don't really have any insights or any, um, you know, um, in, I don't have any insider news. I've not heard things through the grapevine because I'm not in that scene, right? It's completely over. So across the pond, it's way over there. I have no idea what's going on. So I can only interpret what I see online. And of course, you know, on the Estual side, on the Scotty Beam side, on the um, Karen Seville side, they're going to do their most, their utmost to make sure they don't look stupid online because no one wants to look stupid online, right? So for someone like me, you just have to, all you have to, all you have to go by is what you see online because no one wants to look stupid. No one's going to make their faults or, or raise their, or kind of like put their hands up and say like, you know what? I fucked up. Everyone's just going to double down on what's happened and no one's going to apologize. As you've seen with um, the murder mook thing. Murder mook's been called out. He's been called every name under the sun, white knight, wherever it may be. And he's still doubling down. He's still trying to, you know, ride this wave and um, bear his flag that he's got. Um, I listened to actually a podcast previously, but I didn't listen to all of it. I skipped through bits of it. And I didn't even hear the bit he said about R. Kelly when he was defending R. Kelly. That sounded flipping wild and flipping nuts. But having heard everything that Joe Budden is saying, Having looked at the response that um, some of the things that Scotty Beam and Kyra Silver have been saying, and having seen other bits and pieces I've seen online from social, some conspiracy theories and some gossip bits and pieces that I don't want to repeat on here because it's not really something that I'm about, it might seem like I got it a bit wrong in the first impressions. So, if that's the case, and if that's true, then fair enough. Uh, my bad. I didn't, I didn't know... Um, just how far or how deep the hatred for Yes Jules went. I didn't know just how much damage she's actually done within her little scene and how much ill will people have towards her because of the things that she's done and her lack of repentantness or acknowledgement of the mistakes that she's made. Now, if you watched my first video, you'll notice that I did say with the Jess Jules thing, there was a part in the interview where she was listing off the problems that she has with people, naming people, oh, this, that, he said that, she said this, uh, and there was a part of me that thought, if you're going to name one of those people that have an issue with you, you might have to just look in the mirror and think, maybe it's you, right? Maybe it's just you. And people do this a lot. They do it often. I don't know. And again, maybe because I'm very conscious of the words I say and how I look when I say these things. But if I was sitting down with my friend complaining about somebody and I started listing off a whole list of names of people who are kind of out to get me and they don't understand what I'm doing, I'd maybe sit there and think, hold on, if I'm listening of so many names of people who generally, you know, come across quite cool, for the exception of Joe Budden, who kind of always has these little, you know, tips with people online sometimes, for the most part, Karen Silver and Scotty Beam are quite reasonable people. Joe Budden has developed into a reasonable person now. You'd have to say, if you've got issues with those three people who cover, you know, different demographics, in by and large, we're in different kind of scenes, different kind of industries, pursuing different kind of business opportunities. Those three people have a problem with you. Maybe, just maybe if you're yes, Jules, you're the issue. And if that is the case, you have to do, you have to maybe recognize just how much trouble or how much responsibility you have towards or how much you're contributing towards the issue. And I think during the whole interview anyway, I mentioned my first video too, because, you know, people have missed a point and I'm getting a bit of slack online from some people saying, I don't know what I'm talking about. And somehow I'm a coon, which is fucking ridiculous, right? I'm not capping for no one. I don't 
You know, no, I've got no, I've got, I've got no whole, I've not got no dog in this race. I'm just interpreting what I see online. But the moment you don't like sing the, sing the hip, sing from the same hinge of others, you get pointed out as somebody else. But you know, as something that you're not. But hey, ho, what can you do? Um, I think if you're yes, Jules, you really have to kind of figure out and concert and and try and you know figure out what the issue is and what you're doing to kind of contribute to it. And again, I think for the most part as I'm struggling here with my words, I think there is a real lack of clarity, a lack of articulation, a lack of being able to really um, articulate your arguments or your point of views in a succinct way. I think there seems to be a, a big problem with it. And it seems like for some reason, there is a, probably a psychological trait that you can probably look up somewhere. But it seems like the people that have the people that say the most wildest shit, right? The ones that put, always put their foot in their mouth, always putting their foot in shit, always saying the wrong thing, have the tendency to keep talking it seems like a general thing right the person that seems like the for lack of a better term the dumbest person in the room always wants to share their opinion right always wants to let you know what they think about a certain thing and it always really it's really it really confuses me for a while like why do people do that why is the the dumbest person the one that doesn't really consider their opinions thoroughly and doesn't really um understand the law of unintended consequences that doesn't really see things for the long way doesn't really doesn't really have an understanding of optics or how things might look on the outside generally always consistently consistently has gets involved in messy shit and i just guess you know if you just you know if you're not the most brightest person in the world which i don't think yes Jules is by and large you probably don't really think you're doing that much wrong, right? Um, but having listened to the Joe Biden podcast and hearing what they've kind of alluded to, that she might be a bit of a hoe bag and she's maybe stepped her way up to the top and she has this weird um, entitlement thing going on because of the people that she slept with. And if you look at the names associated with her, it's just like fucking hell. Which again, makes me wonder if all that, if all the, if everything they're saying is true and if you're yes, Jules, why the fuck are you talking so much? Why do you have so much to say, right? Because... I guess I'm from the school of thought that I'm from the school of thought. If my parents were really wealthy, right? But I guess it happens a lot in it. I guess it's like um, it's like the politicians in America who are super against gay marriage, and then the story comes out that they've got you know 13 boyfriends scattered around the United States. That they see sly uh, on the on the sly when they're out campaigning, right? It happens quite often. But I guess. My analogy was gonna say is like if I had a rich if I had rich parents and I was trying to do my little hustle in the industry, I wouldn't be preaching the message of like, you know, um racks of riches. I wouldn't be preaching the message of like startup cash and all that sort of stuff and pretending like I didn't get a big injection injection of money from my parents. I'll just carry on doing what I'm doing and not really put any light or any or bring any attention to where my money might have come from. If people ask, then I might have to divulge it or I might have to politely do a little bit of a dance. But you wouldn't necessarily be preaching the good fight about flipping you know about selling things on the flipping on on ebay and stuff because people would look into you and think hold on you know what i mean you've got unlimited funds like what are you talking about why are you faking the funk um and i guess the same thing with yes jules if if this is true and you have strategically slept your way up to the top why would you be the one to then point fingers and call people out on shit it doesn't make any sort of sense really does it like because essentially like everyone else you know where the bodies are buried you know what bodies you have attached to you and people know what body you have attached to you too, right? They, they. It seems like everyone in the industry has an understanding that she gets around, right? Which is again something that I wasn't um, aware of or familiar with at all. Because if you see, if you saw her reaction when her sex tape came out, it seemed like the reaction of a genuinely again maybe a sex tape isn't a good correlation between being a hoe bag. Because there is maybe an argument to be said, like you know, if you're an attractive female and guys want to fuck you in the industry and you see it as an opportunity to get yourself forward, then you know. You're, you're within your rights to do it but i just think you can't go about it the way that she does you can't go about it start pointing fingers and start being catty online and start being irresponsible with your messages the things you're posting online because even with the context of what's happened with what she said on murder mook right podcast um easy offended even with that context i suppose she broke up with a black boyfriend and he was a clothing designer and that niggas lie a lot t-shirt she saw online and she posted it to kind of be of a sub to him even with that context i just think knowing who you are as a person right the, that girl who that the, the white girl with the fat bum from florida and how people look at you out from the outside looking in and the fact that they know you step with people to get where you want to get to it probably isn't a good idea to tweet that right and that's again what I say for some people. I just wonder where all these guys' friends are. Because for sure, when she's popping, when her record label was about to blow up, when Zero Seven Shake was next to her and she was hanging around the good music, I'm sure, you know, there was a lot of people like, you know, on her coattails, standing around and trying to want to be in the picture, right? But the moment something like that happens, I guess for her and her sake, you definitely see where your friends are. 
Or in general, before you've been tweeting it, why are your friends sitting next to you? Because usually when you're on your phone all the time, right? Why aren't your friends next to you telling you, hey, don't tweet that shit. That's not a good idea. Where are these friends? And and does she have any black friends? That's the number one thing. Because that t-shirt idea thing, it's not like it's not like it happened nowadays where everyone's work on Twitter. This happened like a couple of years ago where the wokeness was maybe, you know, starting to come into um, consciousness. So it wasn't even as work as it is now. Imagine if she did it now. She'd be completely done, right? So back then it kind of left people a sour taste in their mouth about her personally. And still, then, you know, you'd imagine she has some black friends. I guess she probably doesn't have that many or any that think that was a bad idea. No one said anything. And she, I think she mentioned on the podcast that I think 10 minutes later, she felt like a deep, you know, pit in her stomach that she might have done something bad. It was a bad idea. Bitch, why did no one around you tell you it was a bad idea? Like, what the fuck is going on here? And again, just absolute mess, absolute bona fide mess. Again, I think for everyone involved, if you're Scotty Beam and if you're Karen Civil, I think you just let her kind of like, you know, dig her own grave because it seems that like she's incapable of, you know, watching what she says and how she conducts herself online. Um, I guess for her friends that are yesterday's friends who are employees of the 1am radio thing, I, I just feel sorry for them because if it's essentially they're the ones that are going to lose out, right? Free association. She's eventually going to say something else that's going to fuck her over, that's going to really cancel her money, and then she'll be completely done out here, and then those people have to get newer jobs. So, again, I always have sympathy for that because, you know, I've come from a position where I've been let go from companies through people's ineptitude and dumb decision-making. And then I guess for all the other guys out there who fucked her, they're probably, like, sweating somewhere in the corner, hoping they don't get drawn into this, right? Because some of the names that have been mentioned, bruv, flipping hell. Like, honestly, man, social media is so messy. And again, so so messy. Okay, I just wish some of wish people just, just wish people just ignore it. Like just carry on and just be like, let her say her nonsense. Just you know whatever. Um, and the murder mook thing again. Like I said, I just think that that kind of white knighting, um, is just so cringe. I think for most guys, um, we've always been in that position. I guess there is a saying that goes around. I think there is something being said about no. There is a saying. There is a saying, right? That I've heard around the single female circuit that if you're going, if you're dating a dude. Um, that they say they say the girls to take them on a date or suggest a date in a public place, right? In a restaurant where there's a lot of service, a lot of waiters, and that you can tell a lot about the dude that you're interested in by the way he treats the, you know, the um, the front of house, the the waiters, the people that work there, just the people around you. You can tell a lot about somebody. And I think as a guy, there's a similar sort of um, thing that we have where you can tell a lot about a friend or a guy that you know from how they act around you when girls are around. Because I remember, you remember in school, there was a really, there was a time when you start to realize, wow, you're the cornball in the group. You start to point out who the corny guys were in the group because they were the ones that would immediately start wrestling when the girls around. Start kicking you, start taking the piss out of your jacket, start taking the piss out of your trainers if they were a bit shit, or your haircut, like picking up, just in, just in general, just degrading you in front of the girl in some sort of weird, convoluted way to make themselves look better. And it never worked, right? It's never fucking worked. It's like, what the hell is that? It's like the guy that goes to the gym get super ripped but has no game you're gonna get something right you're gonna get some girls that are gonna be into you purely on aesthetics only but you're leaving so much room there for fucking clean up just get some charisma man do you know what i mean get some charisma get some jokes on you get some banter and it's the same way with those guys like like they have no idea that that level of sniping and laughing and ad-libbing her jokes about joe budden is not gonna make you look good all guys all over the world are like ugh, cringe He's bending over, he's standing up. What she said wasn't even that really serious. Yeah, they had a, a tiff. Uh, again, in Joe Biden's side, he doesn't think it's embarrassing. He's, he's friends of podcast, if it's a big deal, I think it's a big deal. I think calling, shouting at a girl, like, randomly in the evening because, you know, nearly at 10 at night because um you're, cause you don't like your tracksuit bottoms and you want to return them is a bit wild, in my opinion, right? But again, even if it, even if that isn't um that much of an issue, the, the story wasn't even that, you know, crazy we've all heard the story before it's not so some new revelation and there he is hooting and hollering bending over standing up like you're like jesus christ mate I again murder moot came out of that looking the worst out of everyone in that situation maybe even maybe even worse than yes jules yes jules we know is a little bit like i said in the first video she's a little bit ditzy like she generally is ditzy but she's ditzy and doesn't know it right so she keeps thinking she's being profound and really articulating things and detailing this whole conversation about what happened and why people have issues about her it's like my girl, you spent an hour talking about why people hate you. It might be you. It might be just you. It just might be. It just might be just you. And again, considering what Dev Joe Budden said, reading between lines what I've seen online, it seems like, you know, she's probably, you know, 
burned herself out here and again sad to see in some respects because like i said um i got sympathy for the people that work underneath her more less so than her and the things that might have transpired on the back of it because you know for like like your hate it she has done a lot for helping and putting other artists on the platform and giving them shows and promoting parties and stuff that helps them get exposure blah 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 but you know inevitably the people that work underneath are the ones that are going to suffer the most through her ineptitude or her inability to cut, fucking keep her mouth shut like jesus christ just shut the fuck up like someone tell her shut the fuck up just shut up shut up stop talking stop talking even if you're right stop talking the optics don't look good don't look good you preaching and telling these black girls what they should and shouldn't do and who's come contributing what to the, the human community doesn't look good regardless of what your point is even if you're right it doesn't look good just shut up shut up oh god almighty this is I can't say much because you know, I'm on social media talking and chatting shit on this podcast. But there's there's there is a real skill in knowing not when knowing when to talk and when not to talk. Right? There's something in my book actually it says something about it. When's it in my stoic book? Let's see if I can find this quote because oh, sometimes these guys, man, you're like, what the? How did you people get jobs? Or how do they get in where they need to get to? It, I guess it. I guess it gives you um hope that whenever you start your thing you're gonna be fine because if these motherfuckers can do it you can do it um where is it cutting back costly ask clear set yourself don't trust senses where is it there was a quote here that i found that i thought was really interesting that like really acute denigration oh i don't know where it is when you lose self-control you can't always be late to your own the success of a chain smoke and dust what's better left on yeah there we go yeah uh, is it practice of public speaking capable of moving the mass? Okay, so this is, I don't think it's a fair. Uh, only way to speak to this crisis. So, um, let me see. So, this thing, maybe it's quite similar. So, it says here, it is from the, the Daily Stoic, right? This book. Definitely go and pick it up. This is from February 22nd. What's better left unsaid? Cato practiced the kind of public speech capable of moving the masses believing proper political philosophy takes care um like any um greater city um to maintain the warlike element but he was never seen practicing in front of others and no one ever heard him recite a speech when he was told that people blamed him for his silence he replied better they not blame my life i begin to speak only when i'm certain that i'll say isn't better left unsaid there is something about that shut the hell up if you don't have nothing smart to say or nothing interesting to say or you can't back up what you have what you're saying with some actual sense and some actual logic and not pure emotion shut up but again what do i know um so i just wanted to give an update on that regard because you know i don't want people to drag me online and start thinking i'm an apologist for any sort of uh person out there again i think you're allowed to you have to make your own impression or uh, an opinion about something just off the information you have online you just see your face value if i don't know any other further details and i don't know about them and i can't comment to them in it what, what can you do i'm here in london i'm just some kid man i don't know jack shit i don't know these people um anyway continuing on from that uh ba 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 why are artists okay so why are artists still taking pics with um birdman again i have no idea what this is concerning i don't know if birdman is signing nba young boy i don't know if this is just a, a random picture that just appeared online but it's a bit worrying right um considering birdman's um birdman's recent history with what's happened with little wayne and the fact that it's only recently he's been let go of that ridiculous contract that he was on previously that was uh, um not given the ability to release music or to get the amount of royalties that he wanted from it the fact that for the most part most of the main industry people have kind of steered clear of birdman and kind of you know kept him at arm's length i just find it interesting the infatuation some of the young kids have with birdman and his legacy um you see a lot of it happening with um, blueface right he didn't know his contract situation when he was up at um, breakfast club and um i've seen a lot of talk online about you know ownership and about artists own, owning their masters for all the bad that um record labels have done with 360 deals and just the, you know the fact that they kind of fleece artists there is something that needs to be said about some of the people on in our within our own community whether it's a black or hip-hop community who are also kind of you know uh flagrantly fleecing or hoodwinking young artists coming up like you see steve stout who basically wrote a book um that you know um prophesized the virtues of record labels and the fact that labels are you know there to help people get deals with this sort of shit all of a sudden he's coming back around with this united master stuff and he's got that new kid nel whatever his name is online on breakfast club talking about how he's going to be able to help him with opening his masters and just no one's really saying anything about that and he's always been a bit of a shady character in hip hop. And then you got Birdman sitting with one of the most talented artists um, that's around now in NBA Youngboy. And seemingly, are they are they are they making a deal? Are they just conversating? What's going on there? 
I just a little bit worrying all in all right if you're an NBA young boy you'd like you'd want to you'd hope that someone like NBA young boy is able to make a lot of money forget show money because these guys I think sometimes especially young kids I think they get they they're, 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 they're probably not that bothered about the amount of money they're making from record labels because they're getting so much money um performing in nightclubs or in bars and places and venues all across the US and the US is a fucking huge place so if your rate to perform somewhere is 30 grand and you're able to do two performances a night you are cleaning up right cleaning the fuck up so i guess for some of these guys they don't really bother about the streaming numbers but there is something to be said when you're 30 40 50 years old that you're having being able to reoccur the revenue that's coming in from streaming your your tracks all the way through and again it's your artwork man it's stuff that you've slaved over nba young boy obviously is somebody that i think from the outside perspective looks like somebody who probably doesn't take music as seriously as others, but he's also supremely talented. It, it, it comes easy to him. He finds making music very easy. He raps amazing for somebody so young. Um, the his storytelling, the int intricacies of his lyrics, the way he picks beats, his videos. He's really, really good at what he does for someone so so young. And by and large, looks like he's kind of got himself in. He sorted himself out after some of the um, initial kind of madness happened in the beginning of his career where he's getting arrested nearly every other week. But you just hope that they don't necessarily get, I don't know, in awe of the mystique that surrounds Birdman. Because I understand, you know, Cash Money Records was one of the most seminal, if not influential record labels out, movements out there when it was around, right? But nowadays, with the information at hand, with just a quick Google search and seeing what happened to Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne being basically a son to Birdman, the way he treated him, I just, I wouldn't even want to be seen with a picture with Birdman, personally. Again, I don't know what the business is. I don't know if it's just a general shooting the shit and just conver conversing and connecting and just passing um, OG advice down. But I don't know. If I'm a young artist, I'd be very, 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 very careful about who I associate myself with, who I'm even sitting down with, and who I'm letting even pollute my mind with information. Because sometimes, even if they don't sign with them, just the fact that you're near and you're, they're getting the rub off you and they're kind of influencing how you move and shit could be to your detriment. Again, Again, I don't know the insides out of it. It might just be a picture. It might be an innocent picture that just, you know, shit, drew the shit and just hanging out. But it kind of made me a bit concerned. Anyway, that's, again, I, I don't know. Because I, I, I'm a big fan of NBA Young, but I don't want to see him get fucking fleeced, man. Um, we don't need that right now. Next on the list, um, <laughs> Rowdy Rich literally shut down the UK. Now, Rowdy Rich, right? He came on, I think he came to the UK recently. I don't know when it was, but I think it was maybe a few months ago. And I saw a video of him. I think it might have been like in Birmingham or somewhere random like that, right? Um, somewhere outside of London, sorry, not random. And it seemed like everyone knew his lyrics, right? And I was surprised again, maybe because I'm not in tune with Black UK Twitter. Uh, I'm, I follow people, a lot of people on Black um, US Twitter and stuff, but I don't necessarily have an understanding of what's going on there. I don't necessarily go out to most of those nights that people like that would be at or that would like that kind of music. I generally stay indoors, but. Um, it seems like Rowdy Rich has got a really big um, um, fan base in the UK. I didn't had no idea this was a thing. So I guess he performed at the um, O2 in Brixton. It looked like it was fucking sold out, sold the fuck out. And he literally shut it down, literally. I saw his video online on Twitter, and it looks like an absolute madness occurred at this Rowdy Rich show. So, um, number one, we've got this really funny video of Russ, right, of Gun Lean fame trying to get on stage um because i think uh rowdy rich kind of you know um decided to play the track and bring him up on stage and i guess the security weren't told this was going to happen and they ripped this guy down from the fucking stage as he's trying to get up there i'm going to play the video now so you can kind of check it out but ma mamia right and if you thought that was all that's not all so again this is the video of supposedly rush trying to get on stage <laughs> Yeah, boys and girls, dead rush trying to get on stage, drag him down, tries to get up again, right, drag him down, he tries to get up one more time, and then these boys jump in there trying to scuffle the security guards, it's like, oh my fucking god, just pure utter con pandemonium. And again, just distressing again, because sad, you know, for the UK, because we've got such a good scene happening at the moment. UK rap is probably at the best place it's ever been. UK 
kind of would I, for lack of a better term, urban music is the best it's ever been right now, right? So much variety, so much range, ages, color, creeds, locations, even, right? Before there was a time when all our acts were London centric. Now it doesn't sound funny to hear someone with a Brum accent, Manchester, Liverpool accent, Geordie rapping, Irish doing their thing. No one cares. Everyone's just promoting about the UK. People are even going on fucking cruises. I see people do this thing. They go to Spain somewhere where they, they all go on the same, um, um, not a cruise. What, they, what, what all expenses paid trip, whatever those things, right? Um, and they go away and they kind of listen to UK DJs play, have UK acts play. It's a fucking industry, right? It's amazing where it's at at the moment. And it seems like the problems that we had back in the day with grime, where grime, you know, back in the day, I think yes, Jules mentioned it in one of her talk conversations, which was quite funny. She knew about it, but back in the day with grime, grime rages, the grime performances used to get shut down everywhere, right? Because people had to fill in stupid forms, and you had to let the police know ahead of time some person was uh, was um, going to perform. And inevitably, there was always violence, right? Due to kind of like the overbearing police presence that was there, guys would end up acting out, egos get involved, blah blah blah, show gets shut down, right? It wasn't a really good time to be a, a fan of UK music because you couldn't see anyone, right? Things just get, get locked off. And it seemed like nowadays with Afro beats and the way people are rapping nowadays, things are just a bit more nicer, right? It's a softer atmosphere. Things are not being, things are not as fucked up as they were. I remember back in the day, even fu UK funky, UK funky raids used to be fights. And there used to be scuffles at UK funky. Imagine, UK funky is one of the only things outside of Bashment where girls are also skanking, right? And people are still swinging absolutely madness so you thought you know maybe we're in a better place now things have evolved but unfortunately it looks like nah we still have these dumb issues and it really it really fucks up stuff fucks us over more than anything because this violence and this aggression this attitudes again I'm, i've got sympathy with russ i guess you know if the, if the security are dragging you down again on this madness and you've got a couple of drinks and you're, you're a bit loose and you're maybe secure already being dicks already it's annoying plus i've been to Ojo brixton previously to see travis scott and a few other people the security guards they're a little bit eager right they're a little bit eager they're a little bit um they're a little bit handsy let's say for that matter right they they they're looking to get into some sort of scuffle which doesn't make for a good conducive atmosphere but again i just think with how the situation is nowadays in the uk with the fact that you know the uk government seems you know absolutely blind as to why the issues are um where it lies in terms of knife crime across the uk because it isn't happening to their kids they don't give a flying fuck um we only have, we really only have the kind of quote unquote entertainment industry to kind of help us propel us up. Yeah. You see how they treat um, Raheem Sterling. You see how they go on with him online, right? Or in the Daily Mail and stuff. One of our only verses that we have to really promote ourselves and kind of give ourselves a platform to really kind of carve our own corner in the UK society is entertainment. And we can't fuck it up with stuff like this. We can't, right? This needs just to be dealt rationally and just in a calm manner. Russ gets dragged off stage. One of his mans. Um, agent, manager, wherever it may be, needs to come next to the security guard and tell them he's a performer. He's performing up there with um, with Rowdy Rich. You hear this song, Gun Lean? That's his song. Let him get up there. Just nice and calm. No no scuffling, no fights, no nothing. It just spoils a night and it makes it impossible for us artists, for our artists in the UK, forget Rowdy Rich, to actually perform in big places. That's what we want. We want people to, we want our best artists to sell out O2. We want them to sell out um, Coco's. We want them to sell out all these amazing venues. We want them to perform. We don't want them to only perform in nightclubs because they can perform there without them announcing the venue or the lineup ahead of time. That's not what we want. We want our artists to perform in the best places and things like this are not helping our case. And then on top of it, to make matters even worse, there was a flipping scuffle and supposedly someone got stabbed. Again, this isn't what we need, man. This is just isn't what we need. And again, I, I just don't know where the solution is. I don't know what works and what is the best way to kind of combat this sort of stuff. But it really is a, our responsibility to look after our scene and make sure these things situations don't happen. And it's even more embarrassing when we have a US guest come over. Because I even get a little bit annoyed, right, when some of these UK guys suck up a lot to these US artists. It kind of leaves me a bit of a sour taste in the mouth. You guys are hot as it is, right? Like, DW walks down the street now and kids are shouting his name going, ooh, 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 like you're loved right you're a fucking celeb in this little small city we got called london and this little small island that is called the uk right you are big here you don't need to suck up to these us people but if they are here show them that we got things unlocked show them that we know how to conduct ourselves properly instead of this nonsense and now you've got this um twitter account 99 london uh, london 999 feed talking about some sort of scuffle that happened um during the rowdy rich concert again this is off the back of what's happening with the drake concert happening i'm sure there's no madness happening at the drake thing i, I don't think so for the most part it would be mad to see someone imagine people banging um imagine people scuffling sorry no homo i was banging well you can bang if you want but imagine people scuffling 
in the middle of Jaded, right? Drake's up there and perform, on the stage performing Jaded and people start swinging. Like, what the fuck is going on? Male testosterone is the most confusing thing that ever existed in my life, innit? Back in the day, I understood it. Because back in the day, you know, you step on someone's shoes, you have to put your hands up and you've got to get ready to fight. Even if you're not the fighting guy, you got to get ready to fight, right? You look at some, some, girl, some guy's girl wrongly. You know what I mean? But now that everyone's a little bit more, you know... Softly, softly, people aren't getting nanked for numb, dumb reasons. Usually it's because they're about that life or they're involved in some sort of street, you know, politics. But to see this behavior at a Rowdy Rich concert is just absolutely nutty. Nutty, nutty, nutty. And again, this is another video showing some sort of commotion that happened during the concert. Again, more guys just like scuffling. I don't know what over. Supposedly someone got stabbed. And it's just like, oh. Yeah, Again, I don't know what I'm watching really, but the uh, the update of the, vid of the video on the tweet says here, uh, two other victims are believed to be in non-life-threatening non conditions. The venue was holding a performance by American rapper Roddy Rich. The violence led to the building being evacuated, so he probably didn't finish his set probably. There have been no arrests. Update, may police say that all three victims have now been discharged from hospital, including the man whose injuries were thought to be life-threatening. Okay, cool. So, it's all, I guess it was an overreaction. It wasn't as bad as they say it was, but still. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. We can do better than this, son. We can do better than this. I, I really hope we can do better. This is, again, we're in such a good position with UK music. People are really wanting to hear these people. They're not, they're not, they're not capping or they're not lusting or they're not uh, fiending for US artists to come and tour here. They don't give a shit. They want to see their favorite UK artists, and this is what's happening here at our concert site. <sighs> but again, I don't know. I don't know what the solution is to this sort of stuff. I don't really have a. a I don't really have a proper solution for it. I just wish that we could be more. I don't know, we, we should look after our scene a little bit better. I just guess that, but you know, boys will be boys and testosterone will be testosterone and maybe there's more to the story than I know about. Maybe more to the East, I, I don't know, but hey, it's a bit upsetting in that regard, but what can you do? Um, What's next on here on the docket? Da, 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 da. Let's get this off the screen. Let's get that off the screen. Let's go here. Oh, uh, Spinny, oh, Spinny. Spinny, 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 spinny. Actually, let's go. For, let's start from this one. So, number one um, thing I want to talk about is this amazing, really good um, profile. Probably better than a GQ profile because it speaks. You know, it comes from a journalist's point of view. She's somebody that's obviously a fan of Virgil, but also is asking some poignant questions and not just you know one of his friends from the GQ thing. It's the GQ thing is still good. Don't get me wrong, but this is more of a, a, a probably a better piece overall. But it's a great article on Virgil Abloh. Again, I always fucking mention him as podcast from. Virgil's like my Jay-Z from the Joe Budden podcast. I always mention it. Probably there's a bingo being done if I was more popular <laughs> um, regarding who I'd comment on. But there's this great article um, that Virgil did um, or a great interview he did um, with uh, the New Yorker magazine. Um, and it's written by the journalist called Doreen St. Felix. And it's a pretty, pretty good article. Um, number one, it's great because it's a long form article um, where it kind of... Um, he talks about, you know, the inspiration about the brand, his kind of story so far. And it's also one of those weird articles that has like um, the audio portion of it. So they've had a narrator kind of basically narrate the entire article. So you can listen to it in the background, which is something that I've, I've seen I've seen a couple of times on Medium. And I think it's a really, really cool feature. I hope more, more sites do it overall. But the really poignant thing that I thought was interesting was his impression of Diet Prada, right? And it's something that I've been thinking, I thought of it a while, right? It's something I've been kind of thinking and ruminating on myself, but I haven't necessarily said out loud. And I'm glad he kind of um, said it. Um, again, this is putting aside whatever opinion I might have a virtual of him personally. You know, I have my issues with the, some of the stuff that he's done in the past, but I still think by and large, he's done more, more bad than good. And I just think in general as being the kind of torch bearer and the person that's going first, the person that's kind of bolted through the gates, he's going to kind of usher in a whole wave of amazing creatives. Um, the next generation to come kids are seeing him and looking at him as a new Ralph Lauren. It's you can only imagine what we're going to get on the back end coming out of it. Right. If we're saying that he's not the most quote unquote, talent design has come through but he's achieved the size that he has done imagine when you get somebody that's able to marry his marketing skills with actual technical skills and is able to be a cultural savant it's going to be fucking over right these, these kids coming up are going to be fucking amazing they're going to be fucking awesome and it's all thanks to him right he's the first one through and he's paving the way but i've had a bit of an issue by and large with the narrative that revolves around his plagiarism and the fact that he's copying designs right because i think nowadays especially nowadays especially with the fact that you know there isn't for for maybe apart from maybe five designers there aren't that many really high caliber um pushing the envelope uh breaking molds uh really 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 fashion fashion with a capital f designers out there for the most part 
everyone is a, a, a glorified creative director who has a partial for fashion and they're kind of you know trying to traverse those um, rocky waters and trying to deliver a final product that kind of speaks to the masses for the most part right and with that being the case it's more obvious and, and also with the fact that you know it's hard to really come up with original original ideas in clothing you know most things have been done under the sun it isn't without realm out of the realm of possibilities for an art a designer a creator to go into the archives look through the rich history in fashion pluck and reference out from nowhere and try and reinterpret it and repurpose it for the environment we're living in nowadays that's perfectly fine i don't have any issue with that whatever right it's not like um the sneaker industry that's in, you know fundamentally it's rested on a bedrock of retros right where if for instance if nike didn't have the air max range that they still try and pump they still try and pump people out with air max and air max ones and that's the same sort of thing where would the company be nowadays right most people still wear retros and they continually keep making the same shit sneakers because they don't have any backbone they don't have any insight or foresight they keep fucking swallowing up the same bullshit it's not like that at all right fashion is a bit different but even with that being said there is Every designer under the sun is referencing someone, right? Everyone's taking references. Everyone's trying to, you know, take things from the old days and from the archives and try and reinterpret it and give it back to the modern consumer that we have nowadays, right? That's all well and good. But why does it always seem to be an issue whenever Virgil does it? It seems to be more venom attached to him whenever he references something of old. And if anything, doesn't it help his case? Because some of these critics that are out there saying that he references too much and he copies and he plagiarizes are the same people that said in the beginning. Because I remember this. I fucking remember. When Virgil and Kanye were first going to fashion shows, they were getting accused of not being actual fashion enthusiasts. They didn't actually know. They didn't have the knowledge, sorry. Well, I, I remember precisely when Kanye debuted his collection, at, um, his first collection um, at Paris Fashion Week. I remember, it might have been Kathy Horn or somebody saying along the lines of like uh, during the review or writing in a review that just because you're a, just because you're a fan of fashion doesn't make you should doesn't mean you should make it like what the fuck are you talking about that is essentially why you should make it that is a whole reason why you should make it that's that's essentially why the industry is where it is right um kids um boys and girls all over the world infatuated fashion are intrigued about how things are put together decide oh i like that i'm gonna try that now through process of doing it you figure out if you're good or not the market obviously kind of tells you if you're good or not whether they want to buy it but by and large everyone's interest in this industry has come from that um, first kind of like twinge at your heart when you see something beautiful you see an amazing gown you see a well-crafted suit you see whatever you see online you see something that really catches your attention you're like wow and you dig a bit deeper and then you dig deeper and you find out oh this is how it's made a human makes this cool i'm a human too you start to find out how they went about making it then you start working backwards oh they went to university or they this all they kind of went on this online course whatever it may be you figure out how to do it yourself because you're so passionate about it. that's why we all do it but i remember there's very you know um Condescend, condescending remark made about them right they, they didn't have the knowledge cool okay they didn't have the knowledge back then they have the knowledge now they get the knowledge right you have the access to the internet and um, they have the they have the uh they have the resources they have the um the money that they have you no know, yeah they have the resources and they have the capability to travel all around the world to get an internship at fendi to attend fashion show after fashion show after fashion show probably without an invite just like bum rush the, the places right they have the ability to kind of really speed up their learning process and they do it they soak up all the knowledge like a sponge like you know you can say what you want to say about Kanye and Virgil but one thing is that they are supreme cultural savants they're able to kind of tap into what's going on in a current site guys and boom give you a product right cool it's no coincidence that Virgil's tens were successful it's no coincidence that he makes that fucking belt that wear all the time that was fucking amazing right R right on cue when stuff's happening boom you jump on it and you're you, sorry not jump on it you start the wave right so they're amazing at doing that maybe technical skills are not where they could be but give them time give them fucking time it takes time to get better at these sort of things cool but a little bit of twinge didn't make sense to me i didn't like it but again we've got the internet now so you know the consumers are always the ones that are making the final decisions right the consumers decide that they like virgil they like what he does they buy his thing um, his brand gets successful he opens stores he gets hired as a louis vuitton director so essentially the criticism that he's getting from the critics is null and void because at the end of the day you're making it for the end consumer right you have to marry um, art and commerce he's been able to marry it perfectly but then the kind of criticism he gets, especially from Diet Prada, really leaves a sour taste in my mouth because I said it before previously to people, my close friends, but I've never really been the biggest fan of Diet Prada, even in the beginning when everyone was like kind of like, lauding them. Number one, because if anything, it was just a reminder. It was just another reintegration, even though the people behind it are fairly young. It was just another way of the industry somehow getting, um, somehow um, reintroducing gatekeepers. That's essentially what it was, right? Because essentially it feels like for the most part, 
whatever they whatever the things that they're calling out online on their kind of social media on their instagram feed for the most part it feels like they're trying to cancel the brands it doesn't feel like they're trying to act as a reference board or as some sort of um archival index it just feels like they're trying to cancel the brand that has dared to go into the archives that's dared to go on the first view that's dared to scour through vogue runway that's dared to buy vintage magazines and reference a brand they're trying to kill that brand that's decided to pull a an obscure mugler reference that no one was thinking about and reintroduce it nowadays to new customers they get really annoyed by it and they want to cancel that brand and i don't really get how constructive that is at the end of the day, showing the like the, the side by side images of these brands and what reference they take is cool because the kid that goes out or the girl that goes out and buys that um, Celine copy from Zara is then maybe going to see that reference and maybe dig in deep, right? It only it only helps the industry overall because it introduces these people into these more quote unquote larry or challenging designs or more some more avant garde pieces. They only kind of piques their curiosity and for the people that don't aren't piqued by their curiosity you're never going to make them a fan anyway it's no it's no issue so i never really got the vindictive sort of like nasty mean spirit nature of it now that being said it's fashion you know by and large there is a bit of a cynical edge to it i think for the most part people want to love to hate on something they're never really pleased with anything and for the most part people that are commentating offer no solutions don't actually put their neck on the line aren't necessarily don't necessarily have any skin in the game and kind of um get satisfaction from knowing everything but not doing anything with that knowledge which is fine it happens a lot in streetwear as well but i've always had a bit of a a bit of a funny feeling when it comes to diet pride like they, they, they're just trying to cancel brands they're not trying to inform or help trying to you know provide references just like oh look you copied you copied that brand what that we love we're going to cancel you like you can definitely see the favoritism in the brands that they like and they don't like and again it is what it is they've done some good things with the whole dogs to go buy the shit but for the most part it feels like they're just trying to cancel the brands out there and it just feels a little bit weird and virgil spoke about it right so um, the, the the article says this on the following. This is a New, New Yorker article, right? Um, titled Virgil Abloh, uh, Menzo's Biggest Star. So it goes as follows. Um, Instagram, the Instagram account Diet Prada, which is run by fashion analyst um, Tony Liu and Lindsay Schuler, called out the similarities between Virgil's chair and Mr. Emmett Cobb's. It also compared Virgil Abloh's t-shirt with, Ab uh, the off-white t-shirt with Abloh's 2016 collection to a poster of AJ Fronzi which used an identical font design. In January, it posted a, a, a adaptic of two extremely similar outfits, both yoke yellow and featuring Jagged Tex, right? The one with graffiti, that's that um, small brand, I think in Paris was calling him out on online. The first was made last year by a relatively unknown indie label, Colors, and the second from a Pacific, um, from public television. This did not seem like a homage. Shortly after Passion Prayer Fashion Week, I met with um, Virgil, uh, for the first time at a solo house in Chicago. When I mentioned the post to him, he took the opportunity to praise Diet Prada's editorial project. Again, this is somebody that's supremely positive. Again, for the amount of stick he gets online, right? Again, I think a lot of it is his own fault. I think that Ralph Lauren shirt, that $500 Ralph Lauren shirt really fucked up his reputation. I think in general, I think people didn't mind Virgil. Even he came across sometimes a bit condescending in the beginning and he kind of very quickly changed how he comparted the momentum, how he um, conducted himself online. He was all about the kids and shit. He promoted people and gave people platforms and gave people opportunities. I think that Ralph Lauren polo shit, shirt, because I don't know for me, it really wrangled me when I saw that pricing five hundred dollars of it right i think that really rubbed people up the wrong way but by and large apart from that he's done nothing else really to piss people off really has he to know people again if you don't know him personally i don't necessarily see what the bad vibe is when it comes to virgil but again that that is neither here or there they don't want to get into the whole racial connotations of it but again we will speak about that another time um when i mentioned it to him and um, he took the opportunity to praise that prize editorial project right even though they're slating him, he still praised them all props to them that's a great concept but he added that the account didn't take into consideration that co that coincidences can happen. Now again, I don't I don't assume it's a coincidence. Sometimes you can get a reference, but you're allowed to reference shit. It's fashion. What the fuck is wrong with you? Everyone can reference. Um, he said that he had never seen the colors look when he designed his yellow ensemble. The allegation was founded on um, basically the use of yellow fabric with a pattern on it, which is very true. Ring the alarm, he sighed. I could go on for about a whole hour about the human condition and the magnet that is negativity. That's why the world is actually the way it is. Uh, that's why good doesn't prevail because there's more negative ev energy you can't create more connective tissue around the idea that is a, that is plagiarized 
Uh, you can create it. Okay, they plagiarize. It's better you just sit and point your finger. That's what social media can be. All that space to comment breeds a tendency to fester ver versus actually making something. He went on. It allows you to package up this. You're not a designer. Close a book because designers should be from Belgium, which again goes back to the whole racial connotation thing, which again, I think is something that's very afoot here at the moment. Because I think about some of the criticism I see um, Samuel Ross get on show studio and I think to myself if Samuel Ross was from Kingsington and went to Westminster College and fa studied fashion there right and was known around the circuit for interning at ID magazine would he get the amount of hate that he gets on show studio panel right the social st the show studio staff um, some of the panelists that go in there apart from uh, Mima who does a good job of defending him and really talking about the you know the, the amazing commerce that his brand does the fact that he's able to sell things the fact that he's got investment because people see the value in the product that he's making the fact that he's got collaborations coming out of his ass the fact that he's got his own consultative thing that he's doing under his own name like she's one to praise him but for the most part there's a lot of ill will around um, Samuel Ross someone again a self-taught designer right they didn't go to school to study fashion design and look how much he's killing it and again I just think there's a little bit of um, uh, bad vibes with, when it comes to these guys number one because they're self-taught and I think for the most part especially in London or especially in the fashion industry most people still uh, the fashion industry or the fashion education industry is a lot like the rec record label stuff right um, they're still hoodwinked by the thing of going to CSM right of going to Parsons it's still a thing in their head so when they go to these places and they don't necessarily get the job that they want or their branders and kick off the way they want it to and they've got done the education right they've done the schooling they worked underneath uh, a well-known tutor or they've been working in, or, they've, or they've enrolled in a course that's worldwide known it must really bug you and really kind of leave a sour taste in your stuff in, in your mouth or a really bad feeling in the pit of your stomach when somebody has self-taught, somebody has been screen printed t-shirts, right, um, for as tour merch, suddenly then um, has their own ready-to-wear collection, right, and then decides to, and then gets hired to be the um, fashion director of the menswear division at Louis Vuitton. I can understand why that first a bad ill or ill will, but what I would say nowadays, what you do have with the benefit of a, of this smartphone in your hand is that you can do the same thing, right? You can provide yourself with your own platform. You can. Um, uh, you can kind of amplify your voice out there. You can understand the the, the what the intricacies that go behind marketing and getting your voice out there. Because, like I said, you just it's the days of just being the um, the singular creative at home, um, painstakingly making patterns, cutting fabric, stitching, putting stuff together, and just selling it online with no promotion, no marketing, no um, foresight, no guerrilla marketing, no influence of marketing. Uh, no, uh, whatever it may be called is over. You have to be able, you have to be all encompassing. Or if you're not all encompassing, get people in that can help you do that. And if somebody is able to do that and hack the system and somehow leap forward and kind of get the opportunities that you're meant to quote and get, get, you think you deserve, you get, you or think you deserve that you should have, you can't hate the person, right? You have to maybe look in the mirror and see what you're doing wrong. And I think sometimes, again, I just think by and large, if Virgil was, wasn't the way, if he didn't look the way he looked, and he came from somewhere else, and he maybe came from a traditional fashion industry background, I don't think people would care as much. They wouldn't have that much of an issue with him. And again, like I said, I just don't, I really have a bad, I really don't like Diet Prada in the same way it really, ang or really wrangles me when I hear or read articles from Eugene Rabkin, and he's talking, and he's like, you know, throwing, throwing subbies at streetwear and talking about, you know, a return to tailoring and all this sort of stuff. Again, it's just coded language to ensure that the gatekeepers um, are reinstated and the amateurs or the people that are doing it DIY style are kept on the outside. That's what they want. But essentially, the, the amateurs, the DIYers, people from the street we're seeing, people like myself, we're the ones that are giving those people juice, right? I'm not even a, I'm not even a, a creator or a contributor within that fashion industry realm, right? But I take a lot of pride in the fact that these guys have come from our little scene and are fucking taking over the entire place, right? They're standing around during LVMH Prize and just, you know, contributing their little two pences. I know for some of these fashion intern people, it's really pissing them off. But what the fuck are you doing interning at ID? It's a waste of time, right? ID, you've got ID Magazine is your Instagram. You can make your own ID Magazine on your own Instagram. You don't need to intern at ID. You don't need to go and beg and plead to uh, be the runner at America Transit or whatever it may be called. You can just do it on your own. That's how these most people have done it for the most part. And then they've gotten the attention of all the bigwigs from the fashion industry. Because again, if we say, if we look, if we take, if we take the knowledge of fashion to be the precursor to who's allowed to come in, 
Who's got more knowledge than the LVMH conglomerate, right? Who has the actual knowledge of the industry? Who's kind of gone through all the ebbs and flows? And then they've picked out Virgil as the person to lead the Louis Vuitton men's. They've obviously know something, right? They obviously got something, right? It's not an accident, right? It's not, they didn't go based on his fucking followers on Instagram. There was obviously a reason to it. There was obviously a, a, a long-term project in mind. And he's obviously been given the opportunity to do it. So why not do it and amplify your voice and try to, you know, bring your vision up to that really heady, heady height? No pun intended. But sometimes, honestly, like that Dyer Prada page, again, like I said, it just feels like they're just trying to cancel brands as opposed to really inform or as opposed to become a reference point. People say, it's just, it's just like, oh, you dare to copy from Raph Simmons, you're cancelled. It's like, what the fuck do you want? It's Raph Simmons, where he's a fucking goat. Can I not reference the goat? Like, what the hell's going on here? And look at your goat. Look at your goat, right? He goes to Calvin Klein, right? He makes a couple of good pieces, a couple of good jackets, a couple of good shoes, and look what happens. Look what happens to fucking Calvin Klein. Now they're flipping, stopping. They, they're they're going to stop presenting at fashion shows. Loads of people are getting let go. Like, <laughs> look, what your, look what your god did. Look, look what he did. <sighs> Bloody hell. I still love Raph, but come on, man. Let's be for real, man. Let's be for real. And again, this comes from, they're fairly young too, these diet product people. It's like, what are they doing? Like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Just perpetuating the same cycle of cynicism that exists. In fact, it's just annoying, man. Make it brighter. That's why, that's why even these influencers, they're flipping cringy and they get on my nerves. But at least they make it fun outside fashion shows, right? It's not sterile and mean spirit and everyone afraid when Anna Wintour or Karim Whitefield comes around and quivering. And man, you're like, oh, oh, these people. It's like, nah, make it fun, man. Dress up. You know, it's annoying seeing Susie Bubbles smiling and jumping around everywhere, wherever it may be. But at least they're having fun. Right, at least Lily May is like looks different to every other flipping person that's standing outside the traditional fashion shows out there, right? Like bloody hell, man. Ugh. Anyway, what do I know? What the hell do I know? Um, next on the list here. What's she talk about? Da, 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 da. Um, what else here? Oh. You know what? Maybe save some rest of it tomorrow because we're 50 minutes already, innit? Maybe save some rest. Maybe you can save. Anyway, I might save some more for it for another day, but I just want to update you guys regarding that whole issue, you know, with the whole yes, yours thing, just in case people start thinking, oh, he's an apology. 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 Relax. Take care. I, I didn't know all the other information that was out there, but now I know. But anyway, thanks so much for tuning in to X News Show, episode number 160. It's been an honor. To have the presence, to have you guys, in, or to have the honor of your presence, or whatever it may be called. It's been great. Thanks so much for tuning in. I guess I'll catch you guys again on the other side, right? Tomorrow for another episode, bumper episode. I had two episodes today in the day, which is fucking awesome. I feel productive as fuck. As always, check out my socials for all information regarding me, xnozinga.com. For everything else, if you're watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, tell your friends, leave a comment, let me know what you think. If you're on the podcast app, leave a five star review, help it spread out to people and i'll see you guys again tomorrow for another episode of the show peace